Back in our Channel 3 garden. Hey guys, we're right in the back parking lot out here. and We call it kind of the South 40. I want to show you some of the well different types of plants that grow prolifically out here in the desert southwest. In fact, we'll start on one right over there. And one of my favorite, folks, if you like something that's great to eat, artichokes. And they're coming up right now. And you'll usually get anywhere from 12 to 20 chokes off of each plant. Ready to grow, they will last up to 15 to 20 years in your garden. And when I say easy to grow, they kind of go dormant on, well, during the summertime, come back in the fall, and then you see the results here in the spring. Very nice foil for the garden. Next one, hollyhocks, another one you want to try to grow out here. And the hollyhocks do very well because they reseed so readily. They are a annual, folks, which means, well, they're a second-year bloomer. You can see they're just coming out with this warm weather. And right above us right there is some Lady Banksia rose. And this is one of the most prolific roses that we have growing out here in the desert southwest. Very easy to grow. It's very little. And out in climate. You want something to give us a little bit of shade. And, of course, a trellis. This is one you might want to try. And let's just point down to some of our kale and nasturtium that are growing out there. And there's a lot of things, like I say, growing out in the garden. And one thing you want to do, well, you want to stay as organic as possible out in our garden. There's some nasturtium, some kale there. Beautiful plants hold up very well. Again, we planted both the in the fall. So if you want some great gardens, like I've always said, you want to start out in the fall. But coming up, well, for the summer, there's some things you need to start thinking about doing. And it's very important, like we talk about staying organic. And come on up here, and we'll just talk a little bit about one of the things we're getting ready for is a lot of caterpillar damage. And this is one way to get rid of caterpillars. It's called grandma and this is what it looks like right here comes a little form or a little well a little vial like this and there's thousands of little eggs on this now these are parasitic wasps they are very they're microscopic will not hurt you but what they'll do is they'll go ahead and parasitize those wasps or excuse me those caterpillars on your plant so it's a natural way to get rid of them especially if you got grapes or vegetables there in the desert southwest, you want to go ahead and try to do something like this. Let me show you something else that we're getting ready for, especially this time of year. If you got some mosquito problems, this is something to do, especially in those standing areas. This is called BTI or Bacillus thuringiensis isronisis. <laughs> it comes in just a just some flakes like you're looking at right here. But again, a natural product we use out here in the garden because any damp areas you've got, you're invariably going to end up with some mosquitoes. We go ahead and sprinkle this throughout the area, and it kind of gives them the flu, flu bug, and it's very easy to use. There's another type that we use. It's called Bacillus or Dipillus or Caterpillars. All of them very natural, and it's very important that you stay as natural as possible out there when you're actually gardening. Here's some crate biodiversity. In fact, let's go around and look at the garden from right here. But you'll notice there's just one type of vegetable out there or one type of tree or ground cover. We grow a lot of different types. This is a confusing use for go ahead and a lot of different types of insects. Here's one we use, marigolds. Now we plant marigolds not so much from a six pack like this. We like to plant them from seeds. They do much better. But it's a great way to go ahead and help different types of, well, insects in your garden, creating a it's a sensory type of component to actually create and confuse them for around, oh, maybe your tomatoes or anything like that. And speaking of tomatoes, one last thing. Go ahead and start thinking about a lot of basil is the ideal situation. And Tess, if you want to uh, want to go with tomatoes, we'll talk about that basil because I'll tell you what, it's one of the easiest things to grow, especially during our hot weather. Tess? Back All right. You. We've got the basil, we've got the tomato. You can oh. make a caprese salad already. It is beautiful <laughs> out here. I'll tell you what, I, 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 I really appreciate coming out here every day and just kind of take a look at the garden. It is very, just kind of healthy. How's that? I agree. It's peaceful out it there. Is. It is. With the stresses of life, it gives us a little time to be, <sighs> ah, just take a breather. All right, Dave. Well, we'll see you in just a little bit with some viewer questions for you. Right now,